telecommunication industry. On the one hand, uh, we've seen a surge in foreign investment in the first quarter of 2024. And on the other hand, major players are reporting losses and there are concerns about rising costs and a challenging regulatory environment. To understand what's really going on, Musa Obed, macroeconomic analyst, joins me from Barcelona, Spain for this conversation. Thank you, Musa, for joining me today. Thank you, Professor, for having me. Well, talking about this, as exciting as that news is, many Nigerians will sort of want to understand this. And here is where I'm asking. According to the data from NBS, portfolio investment ranked top with $2 billion. That's total, accounting for 61.48%. That was followed by other investment, $1.2 billion, accounting for 34.99%. And then foreign direct investment, FDI, recorded the list with $119.18 million, which is 3.53% of total capital importation in Q1. 2024. I mean, help us understand, we're hearing news or it's in the news that telecoms had $191 million FDI in the same period. Could this be maybe some mistake or some mix-up somewhere? Um, no, thank you, Perpetua, for that question. So it's not a mistake and it's not a mix-up. And um, obviously, like, these are FDI investments. And just by the nature of, you know, like foreign direct investments, it means that particular, um, you know, investors from abroad invested in specific telecoms companies within Nigeria. And you might be asking, you know, just to get understand, like, why is there so much investment, right, compared to, like, the previous periods, like, quarter one um, of last year? And it's quite simple, you know, the government has had certain initiatives, certain, like, plans that it wanted to promote for the telecom sector, one of which is the Nigeria National Broadband Plan, and um, that's the MPB for 2025. And there's also the special purpose vehicle that the federal government has issued, whereby it wants to add 900 kilometers of fiber optic cable um, for that particular sector. So we see that, you know, this is backed by, you know, an announcement by government whereby it wants to support and ensure that more Nigerians are connected. Right. Well, it's safe to say uh, what is being referred to is probably, I mean, capital importation, which is likely a mix of FBI, FDI, and other investments, not just FDI. Because from NBS uh, data, we know that what came in as FDI in that quarter in total was $119 million. So, I mean, I just wanted us to put that out there. But be that as mm -hmm. it may, how will this FDI impact the telecom sector's development and what are the broader economic implications? Um, well, the broader economic implications are that well, if you take into account the fact that the government has announced, you know, the 900 kilometers um, fiber optic plan, right, to extend it in Nigeria, um, according to, to some analysts, you know, achieving that uh, will lead to 50% inclusion of, you know, more Nigerians in, in, in within, you know, our telecom sector, which is about 33 million Nigerians at the end of the day. What yeah. will be the projected GDP if this is to be achieved? Well, um, the government estimates that, oh, our GDP can go from, you know, the 472 billion in 2022 and by the time we are able to get 33 million more nigerians on board right that will lead to 502 billion so in terms of economic implications we'll see close to you know like 50 billion added to our gdp Right. Now, year on year, capital importation received by the sector in Q1 2024 represents, you know, a 769% increase. Now, compare that to $22.05 million that was received in Q1 2023. Beyond this growth, can we identify specific policy changes or market trends that sort of, you know, drove the rise we saw in telecom foreign inflow? Yeah, so ironically, right, I mean, for Nigerians, all of us complain about the fact that um, there was unification of the Naira and that has, you know, positively impacted inflation. Um, but from the investor side, right, what that showed them, like the unification of the Naira is that now the Naira is much more predictable. So, for example, in June, the parallel markets and the um, official rates for the first time, right, in a long time, were able to merge at certain dates in June. So, for an investor looking abroad, now he knows that, oh, the Naira, this is the range of the Naira. What's is the worst case scenario, what is the best case scenario? So the policy changes that were affected by the government at the beginning of this particular administration's presidency, right? We are seeing that um, as positive news from the investor sites from abroad because Nigeria is becoming a much more predictable, even though it's affecting us internally, but it's becoming much more predictable from those from outside. Right. Now giants in the telecom sector are sort of recording losses. I mean, due to the same, you know foreign exchange uh, that you've talked about. We see that in the, in the Nigerian operations. MTN began the year at 264 Naira in the equities market, but it has now lost 24.2% and as of yesterday, it traded 200 Naira. 
Airtel recorded a loss of $151 million in the first quarter of 2024, and MTN Nigeria again lost 137 billion naira in 2023. Now, although some of these losses have not been crystallized, like MTN sort of rightly said, but is this good for investors? Um, I mean, it's not good in the sense that, of course, it's showing that your company is losing money and you're not performing as um, the world you know, shareholders will like you to perform, right? Um, in the MTN 2023 annual report, this um, MTN CEO clearly states um, that, you know, this has impacted them and that is was the reason why they had such losses at the end of the day. Um, but the second thing we have to take into account is that companies such as MTN as well, right, are also taking more debts. Of course, these debts, when you look at it in the broader macroeconomic position of Nigeria, which is, you know, the inf interest rates at 26%, um, it might mean they have to pay more. But these companies, MTN, Airtel, are taking positions as well to ensure that in the short term, they are able to protect themselves and be able to incur and prevent much more losses, you know, when we're looking at like two years, five years um, projections. Right. Well, while a breakdown by subsector would be ideal, do we have any information, you know, to help us understand which areas sort of attracted uh, these funds the most? Maybe we need to deepen those, uh, the value chain around those areas or subsectors. Yeah. Um, so the report itself just, you know, lets us know because FDI directly invest into companies so like in the equities of the companies so the majority like 119 million point one million right which is like 99 percent of all the money that was invested into the foreign direct investment was invested directly into nigerian companies um so that's all we know for now we just have to wait for like um developments probably in the next several months to be able to know concretely which of these companies benefited directly Okay, I wasn't talking about companies anyway. I was looking at, you know, subsectors. Maybe there is a particular sector where this is happening. Is it the MNOs or is it, uh, you know, some other subsectors within the value chain? But let's, like, let, let's let okay. that go. Okay. Or you want to say something? Yeah, so the banking sector got about $2 billion. Um, So, and this is in line, of course, when we... Remember, in March, right, the CBN has stated recapitalization policy for the banking sector. And so we can see a direct correlation between banks trying to ensure that they improve their positions and the inflows coming into the country, right, which is directly correlated to the $2 billion that the banking sector itself attracted um, within, within the first quarter of this year. All right. So looking at the interest of the communication industry, what do you think are the current challenges? Because, I mean, when you check some of the reports we've seen, especially for H1, I mean, the, the report doesn't look good. So for you, what do you see? I mean, what are the challenges between in this particular sector? Okay, so for the telecom sector, there's a legacy debt. I think that is one of the major bottlenecks that they experience, right? So um, certain banks are unwilling to pay the telecom sector, you know, the 200 billion that they owe them. I think this has proven difficult, right, for MTN, for Airtel, um, for Glow mm -hmm. to do business because they're expecting funds. They are projecting, you know, like their plans based on the expectation of, of these funds. And at the end of the day, you know, that fund is not being paid. So I think until the legacy debt is settled, either by government, either Prevention or by, you know, like intersectoral collaboration, this will still continue to be a challenge for the sector in terms of moving forward, especially when you take into account the current interest rates and also the current macroeconomic conditions in general. But beyond this legacy debt, are there other issues, maybe infrastructure or anything again in that light? Yeah, well, in terms of infrastructure, as I said, right, the 900 kilometers that the government intends to create um, will help solve those challenges. I think the government was conscious of the fact that this was a problem, and so they stepped in in this particular manner. Um, so I think the infrastructure challenge, perhaps in the next year, we'll be having a different conversations altogether. I'll we'll be seeing like progress and better services for Nigerians, right, when it comes to the telecom sector. But I, I think the legacy debt, as at this moment, is what um, is a lot of headache for the CEOs running these companies. Still on, you know, the whole money issue, I'd like, I, I like to get your thoughts on this. We see rising energy costs, and then you know, maybe you can call it an inconducive business environment. Yet, yeah. industry regulators say MNOs, that's mobile network operators, should not increase tariffs. Now, how can regulators balance the need for affordable services with rising costs and the need for operator profitability? Yes, um, I think this is a very sensitive topic um, in the particular industry, right? Because, of course, on the one hand, um, the situation of Nigeria, and then on the other hand, you know, like the government is also trying to look at, um, you know, how it can benefit from the sector. I think the 
solutions to this, right, varies. So I think one of the solutions we can have is when we're talking about regulatory reforms. And in this sense, I mean, you know, like flexible tariff adjustments. So taking into account the present position of the companies, um, I think the government needs to sit down and, you know, discuss with the stakeholders, you know, and agree on a flexible tari tariff regime to ensure that, oh, yeah, as long as um, you're providing this service, we will help you in the interim, right, to ensure that your businesses are not completely um, running on loss. So I think flexible tariff, tariff adjustments and maybe like cost um, based pricing models. So based on the amount of consumption that users use, for example, you can be charging customers um, instead of like what is currently being used now. So those two methods. Right. So for you, what can be done to probably get this industry to where it should be? So for me, I think um, there has to be, so industry leaders and industry stakeholders in the telecom sector need to understand, first of all, that um, the situation in Nigeria, especially as regards interest rates, right, which is like the major challenge that a lot of them have in terms of like borrowing money, et cetera, to, to, to keep costs running, um, will reduce. I think that what they need to focus on is ensuring that they can survive in the interim. So like in the next six months, by the end of the year, I believe just from like um, forecast that by 2025, things be much much better in nigeria um and like for the telecom sector when it comes to perhaps like certain challenges that you're having in terms of like the debt in terms of like the infrastructure i think you just have to engage um the government more and demand that what they are the money that they are being owed should be paid to them because that will allow them to be able to work better right for their individual companies as well as the infrastructure plan so it should not be that the government has allows that oh we are going to help you we are going to create this fiber optic and plan and then at the end of the day the government does nothing about it so i think they have to follow up with the government and ensure that the government executes on that particular promise all right, so we have NCC uh, hoping that a time would come when the industry will be able to deliver 25% or contribute 25% you know, to the GDP. How soon do you think that will happen? I don't think it will happen um, soon, especially in these our present conditions. Um, but I think, like at the end of the day, um, as I said, if there's an accelerated deployment of the fiber optic networks, if there is, you know, the payments of the loan, I think then that's a more realistic thing. We don't just put arbitrary numbers, 25%. What does 25% really mean? It has to be connected to something. It has to be taken contextually in terms of what are the companies there and how are they performing at the moment. So from my own perspective, I don't think it will be achieved yet, at least not this year. Um, perhaps next year and next year we can be having that conversation. Right. Thank you so much, Mr. Albert, macroeconomic analyst, for your thoughts and your time on Business Edge today. Thank you, Perpetual.